In ALIAS 2012, proportional modification has been added to the Transform CV tool. The old proportional modification on the Transform palette has always relied on the option window to create shapes like the spout on this kettle. Starting with the basic surfaces, first you would pick a lead CV, and then choose the transform type or mode. You would set the fall off, which is the proportion, and this controls how the range of CVs you choose will move when you do the transform on the lead CV. Now if you've worked with this tool, you'll know that the process is iterative, and you'll often use the undo tool and adjust either the fall off or the range a number of times to get the right result. In ALIAS 2012, this workflow remains the same, but the interaction has been improved at each stage by adding a new proportional modification option to the Transform CV tool in the control panel. It can be accessed through the Transform drop-down menu or through the new hotspot interface and now works in a much more intuitive way. I'll use this simple plane surface to show the changes. If I choose Transform CV, I can use the spacebar to get the hotspot and select proportional modification starting in the XYZ mode. The first change is that the fall-off sliders now appear in a separate floating window, and they also have a new lock which keeps the two values connected. The range selection has also been improved, so if I pick a lead CV, I now have these new arrows, which I can simply click on to choose the range in all four directions. If I undo that and pick a lead CV here in the corner, then I can also just click and hold on the arrows and they will continuously select the CVs until I release the mouse button. The third method is to use the Shift key and simply drag a box around the CVs that I want in my range. And finally, I can again use the Shift key and just pick a CV at the far extent of the range that I want. I'll keep these CVs picked and go back to the fall-off settings, and I'll start with a value of 1. And if I move the lead CV, all the following CVs move in a linear proportion. If the fall-off is higher than 1, then you can see from these small icons that the movement will change, and the other CVs are slower to follow, giving this accelerated shape. And if I now go less than 1, to say 0 0.6, then the range of CVs follow more quickly, giving this domed shape. I'll just extend the range, and now with the fall off set to 0, all the CVs move exactly the same amount, which clearly isn't very useful until you go back to the fall off slider and break the lock between the two values. Surfaces always have two directions. So setting only 1 to 0 means that in that direction, the CVs don't change their position with respect to each other. And finally, if I bring in a second surface, the new prop mod works successfully across multiple surfaces, as long as all the edge CVs are coincident. If I pick a lead CV, the range selection can continue into the second surface. And when I do the move, I get a smooth result between the two. Now I have four design examples to show you how this process works in practice. This kettle spout is a classic example of wanting different falloff values in U and V. Down in this corner I can see the U and V directions clearly, but I'm going to use the new draw style options to make the V hulls dotted, so that when I'm working up here I can still easily see which direction is U and which is V. If I pick my lead CV, I'll click on the arrows to select my range. And I'll start by just focusing on the V direction. A value of 1 doesn't give me the control I want. If I increase it, that's much better. But maybe I want one less CV in my range, so I'll just click again on the arrow. At the top, that's a bit too wide, so I'll increase the fall off. So you can see how spending time on the iteration gives you the best control over the final sculpting.
In this example, I have a surface that I want to modify in one direction only. And here I've built a profile blend between it and the main surface. I'll pick Transform CV and continue working with proportional modification in the XYZ mode. I can pick my lead CV, and in this case I'll use the Shift key and select the furthest extent of my range. I don't want movements in this direction, so I'll choose zero. In the other direction, I'll set a gentle falloff. So my surface only moves proportionally in one direction, creating this air scoop. If I undo that and try a different falloff value, I can build a power bulge instead. And I can now more easily adjust the range and the falloff and keep sculpting to get a more subtle feature. Next, I want to show you some of the other modes that you can use with proportional modification. This cosmetics pack has this crisp edge feature, which gives a distinctive shape at the top, but which fades back to a simple circle shape at the bottom. It's built with a half cylinder surface and a duplicated instance on the other side. And I'll start by creating the indent using the NUV mode. I'll pick the lead CV and then the range as before, leaving the bottom row unselected. I'll choose a linear movement vertically and a softer movement around the edge. But when I do the NUV move, it's too fast. But because PropMod is part of Transform CV, I can now use the mouse sensitivity setting to get more control. Now to add some twist into the pack, I can switch to the rotate mode. I'll pick this end CV, and this time I'll use the shift key to quickly drag select the range. In the U direction, I'll set the fall off to zero, and I'll start with one for the V direction. But this result is too linear, so I can modify the falloff setting until I get a nice accelerated curve. These three examples have been of concept modelling, but PropMod can be useful for accurate production work too. On this automotive model, if I want to work on these three side door surfaces, I'll need to concentrate on keeping the hulls flowing smoothly. To see the surface structure more clearly, I'm going to change the colour of my hull directions using the new user colour settings. And now you can clearly see that U and V are in different directions, and this can cause problems when working with hulls. So if I use the original Move CV tool with Slide and pick some hulls, I can select across the surfaces, but the problem here is that each slide works independently. And if I try to move them all at once, then the different U and V directions mean that I don't get a good result. But now the slide mode has been added to proportional modification. And because all my boundary CVs are coincident, I can work across the three surfaces, even if they have a different degree. So I can now slide all these three hulls in unison. And even better, I can pick more hulls and slide them in proportion. And then finally, I can switch to do an XYZ move, for example, and start to sculpt my feature. And you'll notice that although I can work across the surfaces, I can't guarantee that the continuity is maintained at the boundaries. So you may want to use the Align tool with proportional modification when G1 or G2 continuity is important. Adding proportional modification to Transform CV has improved the interaction at every stage. It now works across multiple surfaces and has a new slide mode, which you can select from the control panel or the hotspot. The floating falloff window is always on the screen during iterations, and the new arrows and shift select make range selection much quicker and more intuitive. Being part of Transform CV brings other benefits, like access to mouse sensitivity and step size. And if you want to learn more about the hotspot, the new transform modes, or other workflow changes, have a look at the Direct Modeling Interaction Enhancements movie, which is also in this collection.